after that, I was so angry. Number three, highest earning YouTuber, 38 million. I have enough money. I don't need more money, and I donate a lot of the money that I get to charity. Well, let me go follow my passion. No, no, you need to pay the bills today. I just tell you this, man. Guys like this are so annoying to me, man. I make an ungodly amount of money, and it feels unfair. Guys like this are a blessing, man. They're like naturally gifted at this stuff. God bless this guy, man. I'm not hating on this guy, by the way. Don't know if he's, if he's a believer or not, but he's following a biblical principle of always constantly seeking and gaining wisdom, recreating yourself, not necessarily the money. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we have another reaction video. And this time it's to Markiplier, Markiplier. Harvard sound, but my team says, man, you gotta check out this video because these guys are the original YouTubers. I'm like, bro, what, what does it mean to be an original YouTuber? And he goes, no, one of the OG type of creator types that started this, you know, many, many years ago. And I'm blown away because when I see these young cats considered, be, <laughs> when I see these young guys considered to be OGs of YouTube, like uh, a couple episodes ago, we did a uh, reaction to Lil Baby because he's mentoring the younger generation of rappers coming in that are 13, 14, 15 years old. Listen, right now, what does it say to me and you and everybody else in the world that there's no excuse for you and I to be making money? I think it's your duty to be making money. I think it's your it's an honor for you to be making money in our in our country, for your family. Uh, you've got to uh, uh, fund and finance aspirations of not only yourself, but also the faith that you follow because big dreams require big finances. And the bigger the dream, the bigger the commitment, the bigger the resources necessary to make those dreams a reality. And uh, nothing gets around not having enough money for it. So let's continue on this video about my reaction to uh, Markiplier, I'm saying it wrong, tells Logan Paul how to make $38 million from YouTube and whatever the death of Unis Anis means. So let's check this out. It's so good. You, you've done a phenomenal job of evolving. I'm, I'm always impressed with the creators who can um, maintain relevancy for that long because as you know it's a marathon not a sprint um and 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 every year by the way i think it's both i think it's both a sprint and a marathon if you want to be working with urgency and you want to be in constant recreation of yourself and by the way that's the fun part you know if you are patient but at the same time urgent but also knowing that this race is a long-term type of uh conversation a long type of long-term type of evolution uh but that doesn't mean that just because it's a marathon, you pace it out, you take your time. No, you going out there, I mean, these, the, the best world-class marathoners, you know, they run like four or five minute miles. And for some people, that's their best mile ever. This is these guys pacing. They run four or five minute miles for 26.2 miles. So let's continue on this interview here from Logan Paul. Somehow, I see you on the Forbes top paid list, <laughs> top paid, highest, <laughs> highest earning influencers list. I, I have a stat here. Number three, highest earning YouTuber, 38 million but you don't lead with money. No, you not just, really. You just make money by default of-, of, of I hate to say it, but kind of, yeah. I don't okay, focus on money first. This. It just so happens that like in, in my philosophy of how I create, I just so happen to find success. Also, my manager has made some decisions that are like, oh, it works. Uh -oh. Uh, so it's one of those things. Um, but at the same time, like with Unisonis, one of the sides that we don't talk about is that the merch side of it was incredibly successful. Okay, so I'll say this, okay, especially coming from the perspective of many people that follow me on YouTube, many subscribers, many people I interact with on my IG and, and TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't have the benefit of starting anything early. I came to a lot of the success I have in my life, the cash flow that we make with, with our, our business, the revenue we make with our business, come from a position of experiencing pain. Well, I'll preface this by saying, if you can start early, no matter what age you're looking at this, because something's about to be a trend five, 10 years from now, as long as you can get on a trend today, now, then you'll be considered one of the OGs. You'll have the benefit of being able to say, you know, when uh, before everything blew up, I was already doing it. So oftentimes people think that something has a trend first and then you do it. These guys are doing it long before. And then as trends start to expand, you're already there with a network. You're already there with a brand. You're already there with a voice. And then you recreate yourself for that generation. And you create yourself for that next generation. But the values and principles being able to be ready and be able to work with urgency and constantly recreate yourself, that's a value and a principle that you should never let go of. Um, it was actually, I didn't even really want to do merch at first. I was like, oh, it's robbing from the meaning. And then the merch sales started going up. And it was like, <laughs> like, like wow. okay. <laughs> we should do merch. <laughs> there was a time during the live stream where it ended where we had bought 
the our merch company had bought every single black hoodie in America. <laughs> every single one at that time it took five months to fulfill every order Dang. from that live stream what a great problem to have you drained the inventory of every black hoodie maker out there that's called building a brand building a following building a list and then you launch something and then you monetize that network you know it's uh it's something about uh, being able to give first give first give first and then ask oh my god mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. That's a it's lot massive. of money. Yeah. And That's again, it, it's like I never in retail any stores. way of Big this box idea retail stores. was money the first priority of it. And obviously, like, I have enough money. I don't need more money. And I donate a lot of the money that I get to charity. Um, but it's at the same time, these are Okay, I'll stop right there. No, you do need money and you need to make a lot of money if your vision is more than just money. Obviously, if you have a purpose, you have a guidance. I mean, this guy's value is not necessarily creating money. Good for him. But that's not an excuse for you out there that's living paycheck to paycheck and say, oh, let me go follow my passion. No, no, you need to pay the bills today. He had the luxury of starting this business when he young before he needed a lot of money. And by default, he became wealthy, he became rich, and then decides to build a family, expand his enterprise, build a family, and he's already got money set. Many people go through life not that way. I would say a majority of people don't go, go through life that way. So if you are sitting there as an excuse, this guy's, well, you know, let me take my time. No, no, that's not the message. I would want you to hear from my reaction of this guy. Kudos to this guy. Give him his flowers. 38 million. That's not, it's over three, three million dollars a month in terms of cash flow. More power to you. But for everybody else that's out there, you got to find something where you not only are passionate about it, but bottom line, you still got to be making money. At the same time, these ideas that lean more into these creative and letting go and these kinds of things that are more one-off things and, and more catered towards an emotion and not really a payoff of like good content, um, they can be incredibly successful if, if business is your strategy. Like, can, can you um, run me through your revenue streams? My revenue streams? Yeah. An exact revenue. Uh, so there's my YouTube channel. Um, That's probably the bulk of it. Uh, there's a, like Cloak, um, Distractable, Go. Uh, Those three I don't know. brand deals that I do. Okay, brand deals then. Um, no merch? I, I give most of my merch that I do. That goes straight to charity. Okay. Um, so but it's I a revenue stream though. Like a few years. Because you're on that list every year, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's Which hard is great. to do as well. Is it mostly ad rev? Is is the that's majority what? of that ad rev? Mostly ad rev, brand deals. Um, I know there's something I'm forgetting. But again, this is like how not closely I look at the money. Yeah. I have investments that I make and they've done well. And um, it's... <laughs> It, it's like I don't even know how they calculate that number because I'm I don't either I don't even follow it really. I just tell you this man guys like this are so annoying to me man <laughs> so annoying to me he's asking him a straight up question and this guy's like out here either he's BSing you that he doesn't really want to reveal his revenue sources or or the second part is he's so into his business that by default he's actually honest he doesn't know where everything's coming from and had it been for his business manager to arrange things and find out where these things go money would be left left and right and here's the thing too as well if you're not on top of your money you got unnecessary money leaving people stealing from you taxes being taken from you all these different things are are leaving so this is not a great example of what i would say financial stewardship god bless you that the fact that you're making 38 million dollars from youtube awesome here's another thing my observation if he wasn't such a good talent, a lot of his money would not be made from ads. The only reason why I don't like making money from ads is because somebody can say, well, I'm going to advertise on somebody else this month or next year, et cetera, et cetera. I like being able to be in a product or a service that I can control, that somebody else with different buttons and different decision-making processes and boardrooms that I do not control or be a part of can change my livelihood. Because what happens if he is completely depending on what I, which I don't know, if he's completely depending upon that ad revenue and he's creating all these jobs, creating all these jobs, next thing you know, YouTube decided to make another change and it disrupts his cash flow. Then he's got to let people go. Then he's got to depend on more brand deals. And then the comfort level that he's at right now, I don't really understand where my money is. He is going to be a little bit more specific on where his money is going. Now, the more money you make, the more involved and more specific you've got to be because it's okay when you have one revenue source. But if you're not clear about the areas where you're making money, 
that's where so many different leaks are happening and so many opportunities then are missed on just because you're not on top of your finances. It's just one of those things where I was like, I don't, I have enough and basically my personal account, I pay myself through my company and that's more than enough than I would ever need in my life. I, I, I've said that I said this while I was talking to Anthony Padilla is just like, I make an ungodly amount of money and it feels unfair. And I, I'm open to talk about it because it just seems like such a cheat of the system to be able to have this much success when really all I want to do is make content and inspire others to make. Stop with this narrative already. Who told you that it's, listen, if you're going out there and you're providing value and people are willing to pay you for that value, why do you feel, why would somebody feel disrupted with making that much money? Don't feel bad. That's what the market is willing to pay for talent like yours and value, and value like yours. Now your job is to feel so guilty about it, create some more jobs. Go out there and bless some other businesses, invest in other things. Don't feel bad. Listen, that <laughs> guys like this are a blessing, man. They're like naturally gifted at this stuff where people like myself got to grind through everything that we've ever had in our life and will have in our life. God bless this guy, man. I'm not hating on this guy, by the way, but please don't buy into the narrative that just because you make a lot of money, you feel guilty about it. There's something you're supposed to be doing that money. Now, here's a problem. This guy feels this way for this too long of a time, guess what? When much is given, much is expected. And I'm not so sure if this guy has faced a setback, a major setback in his life. I don't know, you obviously know him more than I do. Many people know him more, more than I do. I'm just learning about him from this one reaction in this video, but I'm just basing it on my reaction to us watching this for the very first time. I'm watching this for the very first time. But uh, this whole narrative that uh, rich people, you should feel guilty about rich people. No, no, no. If it wasn't for rich people and wealthy people, first and foremost, especially people like him who came from nothing to feel guilty about it, it's a wrong mindset. You should find yourself in a much different platform because now that gift has been given to you. Question for you is what are you going to do about it? Are you going to double it in size? It goes back to the original Bible story episode that I posted and how the Bible made me a millionaire. It's that value and principle that he's become blessed with an opportunity. Now he's got to expand his ability. Okay. But at the same time, it's something I can't deny because to deny it would be a hypocrite, a hypocritical thing to do. It's But you are denying it by feeling guilty about it. Just stupid. When I have what I have and I'm able to do what I do and I'm able to eat, have a roof over my head, able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, the next thing I do is just like give it away to people that need it or try to invest in my friends to be able to lift them up and mm. hopefully they find success and other people that inspire good, me good. Uh, so that they can move forward. But again, it's like, it's at what point does it become too much? Never. What's, what's your, <clears throat> it never becomes too much because I believe we serve a God with unlimited resources. And because we are in a position where we can have access to that, we need to expand our ability to have those resources. So in other words, this guy, which for a lot of people doesn't come natural to, it's come natural to him. Well, God bless you. Hone that talent. Question for you is, of course, my question for him is, who does he really have in his corner helping us manage his thought process? Brother, humble yourself to, to an extent because a lot of people love to be in your situation. You don't like being in that situation? I bet you there's a bunch of people that love to switch situations with you. There was a, there's a couple paths that my YouTube career could have taken at various points. Um, you know, it's, it's really, I think a lot of it was being raised by my dad. You know, he had a good moral compass and I think like that, I, I took that in, but I was, I was a shitty kid, you know, not that shitty, you know, not acting out or anything, but just like anger issues, just like pure rage inside me. Really? I could oh, see yeah. it. Uh, every time I was coming home, like at least once a week, I'd be punching my dashboard all the time. Just like for some reason, I was just so angry all the time. And I hated that about myself. Um, and then my dad <laughs> passed away when I was 18. Mm. Um, and oh, I really to tried to, from that moment, because after that, I was so angry and just releasing and just like taking it out on everything around me. I never hit anyone. Well, I mean, at, at one point in high school, I broke someone's rib, but that was a totally different story. <laughs> he <deserved> it. <laughs> Besides that guy. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was one of those things where when you go through loss like that and you either go so many different ways, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, but then I had my own health crisis. Like I had a tumor in my adrenal gland and all of this rage did me nothing. It did me, it did me absolutely nothing. Help no way. You know, sometimes when you go through great pain, it gives you great perspective. And so anytime that people want to make a change, if the pain isn't bad enough, sometimes the death of a loved one, like a father, a mother, a parent, a sibling, um, you know, tragedy in your life, watch around those life moments with people 
because that's usually when great change for better or worse starts to happen. And I suspect in this guy's situation, it got better because it gave him perspective. Maybe after his father's passing, he wasn't so angry after all. Matter of fact, he probably appreciated his father that much more. He loved his father that much more. I don't know why he was angry. I can relate with that because when I was a teenager too as well, I was a very angry boy too as well. That's part of the reason why I was in the three different sports I enlisted into the Marines. But thankfully I had an outlet. Some people just don't have an outlet to let their emotions go. And so uh, let's continue here. And I remember being on a, a table for a CAT scan and I was getting a biopsy, which is basically just being stabbed. And, you know, some guys pushing uh, maybe like about as thick as this cable here uh. into my back, just like and I like very little painkillers. And I'm just getting stabbed on that. And I said, oh, my God, this, this is real. This uh, this ain't a joke. Um, and then I got the tumor removed. It was non-cancerous, thankfully. Um, and then I was just in the hospital. I was like, holy shit. I have done nothing to control the course of my life. I've done absolutely nothing. And I, from that moment on, I was in my fourth year of engineering school. I was like, I need to do something that I actually appreciate and I enjoy. And that's when I started doing YouTube. But yeah. Mark, did you did you see someone making YouTube videos that you wanted to emanate or, or emulate? Or did you just leap yeah. of faith completely no absolutely and it's this is kind of the craziest thing because right now i'm working an internship at corridor digital do you know those yeah guys of there? course great. i'm in their office as I'm, an intern i'm their intern no way. <laughs> and that's the thing is just like I wait, 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 that's freaking awesome by the way a guy with this stuff which which the benefit of going and pursuing your dreams or goals and money's a byproduct what you do is you're always hooked onto the anchor which is what your values and principles are and so his value and principle is to be a constant learner, to recreate himself. And it's just great to know that even though he's making $38 million a year and just that's just from YouTube, that he can still humble himself and empty his cup to still be an intern for another digital type of company, learn something new, recreate himself for the next generation. So I, I love hearing stories like that when, you know, their, their cup is full and then they're smart enough to empty it because they stay humble and they stay hungry. Now I'm working with them in their office, just helping out. I did their dishes before I left, like, <laughs> and but I don't care because it's just being that environment, uh, in that environment around people that inspired me, learning from other people, trying to learn new skills about VFX, which I don't know anything about. You're making $35 million a year and you're washing people's dishes. <laughs> yeah. it's a great Are you trying to get hired? <laughs> Are you trying to get hired? Have you asked them? To see no, no, no. They, they couldn't afford me. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're, uh, you're fascinating, man. This reminds me of King Solomon. He's talking to his sons. In Proverbs chapter two, he says this to his sons about something you should always seek and gain. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair. Every good path for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. So I'm looking at this guy. Don't know much about him. Don't know if he's, he's a believer or not. But he's following a biblical principle of always constantly seeking and gaining wisdom, recreating yourself, not necessarily the money. My only pushback on him is don't feel guilty about being successful. Don't be guilty about living out the gifts that God has bestowed upon your life. You're there to be a, you're there to be a bigger blessing, to expand the reach to people that have been lost and unfound. It's up to you now to help those more, more further than just YouTube. So that being said, guys, here's a couple other episodes I want for you to check out. You, you agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put your comments and feedback in the comment section below. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, please pick up my latest book, my first book ever written, Faith Made Millionaire. Because sometimes when you find yourself in the worst position, you actually find yourself in the best position. And how you tap into that, check out the book, Faith Made Millionaire. You can buy it on Amazon today. That being said, guys, if you watch this video and you found some value in it, and you haven't done so, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you haven't done so already either, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be Mighty Smart today.